during any week of the Trump administration. There's plenty to report on. There are outrages, flip-flops, dysfunction, insults, racism. Yet, in the advance of CNN's debate in late July, CNN sort of took a break from all that. They decided to promote a game show? Tonight, we're taking you behind the scenes of the upcoming Democratic presidential debates that CNN is hosting in Detroit. Now, we want you, the voters, to see how we're choosing which 10 candidates will appear on stage together. They could have done that themselves, behind closed doors. But they wanted transparency. So I have all 10 of these names here. I'm going to give them a good shuffle. And because we are being very open about this process, we have multiple camera views. So it took an entire hour to match candidates with a Tuesday or a Wednesday. And then they analyzed it. John Delaney says it's a bad idea. John Hickenlooper says it's a bad idea. CNN wants a lot of eyeballs on this debate. And they're willing to really, really embarrass themselves to get them. Coming up, we're going to reveal how the candidates will be positioned on stage each night. The transparency clouded something else, which is that CNN is in partnership with the Democratic National Committee to pull off this debate. CNN wants a big audience for its ratings, for its money. And the DNC wants a big audience because it wants to present its candidates to the country. So they have overlapping interests. It would be one thing if these news organizations were holding just one debate and then kaput. Guess what? We've got 10 more candidates tomorrow night. But that's not the way it is. The Democrats are holding 12 debates in the 2020 cycle. Each of those debates provides incredible opportunities for a hosting network. The second debate that MSNBC organized brought in 18 million viewers, the largest audience ever for a Democratic debate. And this was in June, about 16 months before the election. The other reason is that the networks get incredible exclusive footage of these debates. And when other outlets want to show a clip of the debate, they end up having to credit whatever the sponsoring organization is. Remember when Barack Obama told Hillary Clinton that she was likable enough? Well, if you go back and look at that, you'll see ABC News branding. I don't think I'm that bad. Um, uh, you're likable no. enough. Thank Hillary, you so much. <laughs> and who can forget Donald Trump defending his ample manhood? He referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. Fox News branded all over it. This gives tremendous power to the DNC. Everybody wants a debate. You want one of these ABC? You want one of these CBS? You want one of these CNN? You want one of these MSNBC? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. The relationship is a partnership, and that is a problem for any news organization. Look at any journalistic ethics handbook. It always says avoid any sort of cooperative endeavor whatsoever with the people you cover. The role of news organizations is to form an adversarial relationship with politicians. And so news consumers, even if they see tough questions, are entitled to ask themselves, how much tougher could the questions be? The prospect of getting a debate and all that entails hovers over the coverage of the television news organizations from the day the president is elected to the day the next president is elected. That means that you never want to alienate too much either of these organizations, either the RNC or the DNC, because they're the ones who are going to decide whether you hold a debate and how many debates you hold. There's millions and millions of dollars at stake. So who's the winner in this particular game show? Come on down, rich cable news anchors. Come on down, cable news executives. Come on down, anybody but the American news consumer. And don't forget, folks, spay or neuter your pets.